Welcome to In the Zoom Where It Happens with our host, Katie Vivas and Brandon Kreckel. I'm Katie Vivas. And I'm Brandon Kreckel. And in the Zoom today, we have Casey Venna, who is the general manager of the Country Club Plaza here in Kansas City. Welcome, Casey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is uh, such a fun thing that we get to do now that things are all sorts of different. Yeah, we are very excited. <laughs> well, we're, we are. And, and thanks, Katie, for introducing Casey. Um, and, you know, we're just going to have a nice, easy conversation um, about uh, what's what's coming up for you all. And, and but but first, I um, we like to kind of get to know you a little bit better. So um, starting off, you know, if you don't mind, just telling us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved um, in your current role. Um, and, you know, if you want to say if you're originally from Kansas City, uh, things like that. So a little bit of background to start things off. Sure. So I, yeah, I grew up in the Kansas City area and, uh, you know, grew up coming to the lighting ceremony or watching it on TV. Um, after college, I lived on the plaza. So, you know, I certainly have a, a good, strong background of the plaza and what it means to Kansas City and really to the, the region in general. Um, I actually came to my role. I was working with the Kansas City Urban Youth Academy and um, the the Country Club Plaza actually has a charitable trust that it oversees. So I was actually working with the former GM um, on a grant for the Urban Youth Academy and, you know, all of the impact that that, that could do in the community. So that's how I got to know her um, and our relationship built from there and actually came on board here as the marketing and sponsorship director. Um, and then when the GM uh, moved on to another role, I came into the GM position this year in February. Fantastic. Yeah, that's how I met you was at the KC Urban Youth Academy, which was great. Loved, loved getting to work with you then and so thrilled to get to continue to work with you now. It's, as yeah. you're it's a great place. And, um, you know, with the charitable trust, we get to do so much good work in the community um, to organizations like the Urban Youth Academy. Yeah, well, actually, let's just talk about that. What are, you know, tell us a little bit about your, um, the Plaza's charitable opportunities and, and how you guys stay connected and, and work and help with other organizations within Kansas City. Yeah, so we, like I said, we oversee a charitable trust um, that's been with the property for a long time, and that um, gives us an opportunity to do, do outreach in, in the Kansas City area that benefits a lot of different organizations, and we support um, basically four pillars. Um, arts and culture, uh, health and human services, education, and um, oh my gosh, now I'm going to get my fourth pillar. I should have asked if this is editable. <laughs> you know, the beauty about this is, is that um, we can, we can just keep going and, and just kind of chit chat. So I mess up all the time and forget words on a regular basis. So our audience yeah. is used to that from me. So you just really fit right in with Brandon and I right now. now. Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. No, so, yeah. And so our with our terrible trust, and now I'm freezing. I just feel like this is um, a whole, a whole going to be a fun thing. Um, no, so yeah, we, we were able to support a lot of different areas in the community. And, you know, I'm um, on a couple of boards with the, the Kansas City um, Education, the Kansas City Public Schools Education Foundation. Um, we support, um, like I said, the Urban Youth Academy. That's an organization I've been involved with for a long time and just a wide variety of groups, everything from um, Restart to the Nelson. Um, so just a lot of really great community organizations. And then we also had a program this year called Community First, um, which had a lot of different components. One was also charitable giving. So it was completely aside from um, everything that we were doing with the trust, but it, um, it kind of had a lot of different components, but we really wanted to as we celebrated the holiday season, um, you know, the lighting ceremony had its components of community first. And I know we'll talk about that a little bit, but we really wanted to bring attention to all of the, the people that work on the plaza. I mean, there are thousands of employees from all of our different retailers and restaurants, um, all of our office workers even. And, you know, if you extend out a little bit, all of the hotel workers that are really, you know, making 
making the community go round. So whether you're talking about a local um, retailer or restaurant or even a national brand, I mean, those are people that are our neighbors that are working in Kansas City, living in Kansas City, raising their kids in Kansas City um, and supporting organizations in Kansas City. So each week um, over the last few months, we've really tried to highlight people that are the employees of um, different retailers and restaurants. And so a part of that too is each week um, we've uncovered what those people are passionate about and we've done a thousand dollar donation on their behalf um, to whatever organization you know they they support. Um, and that's been a, a real variety. And we've uncovered you know these passions of the people that work on the plaza that you know people don't they don't think of when they're shopping at Made in KC that you know there's an employee there who has these passions that are really benefiting the community. And I mean I think you can go store by store and restaurant by restaurant and really find that. Um, and again, the thousands of employees that work here. So that was kind of, um, and there's other pieces that, uh, that go along with that community first challenge, but being able to make those donations on behalf of our tenant employees was really, um, you know, important to us. And, you know, I think it really made a good impact. Um, but there were other components, like I said, one of them was we partnered with Feeding America and Harvesters um, to combat food insecurity. So from November 26th, to December 23rd, we actually donated 10 meals for every um, Plaza Lights photo that was posted oh. to Instagram using the hashtag community first challenge. So um, a lot of give back, a lot of, um, you know, again, there's just so many amazing community organizations and people that are um, putting others first, especially in this time that it was a great opportunity for us to be able to, um, to really contribute to that during this holiday season. Wow. That's awesome. And, and from firsthand experience, I used to work on the plaza. I used to work at Cooper's Hawk um, yeah. all throughout college. And, and you're right. I mean, the, the people that, that work on the plaza, if you, you know, ever get a chance to get to know them, they do, right? I mean, everybody's super passionate about something um, and they're just amazing people. And um, I, those are probably some of the most um, enjoyable times of my life is working, um, you know, with, with everybody. And um, I was still doing that pre-COVID and then COVID came around and shut things down. But um, yeah. one of, one of my favorite times, cause Cooper's Hawk overlooked the plaza and everybody wanted a seat for the plaza lighting ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that might be a good transition into, you know, what was that like this year? Um, with everything being virtual, having to shift gears, um, quickly, what was that like? And then looking ahead, you know, next year, hopefully we're back to normal, but what do you guys have planned? Yeah. I mean, it was really a different year. I mean, from first. So many reasons, but certainly when we look at our big events, um, we had this is the 91st annual um, Evergy Plaza lighting ceremony, and actually it would have been the 95th year for the lights um, in general before the lighting ceremony started. And then we also had the 89th annual Plaza Art Fair. Um, so you know these very long-standing traditions in the community that are um, really engaged by so many. I mean, as I mentioned, I, I grew up coming to the lighting ceremony and. You know, it's such a, it's such a joyful experience, I think, for people. And whether you're watching it on TV or watching it here live at the plaza, you know, it's, it's got a lot of tradition. And I mean, that's kind of the kickoff to the holiday season for Kansas City. So when we looked at this year, you know, we really, we wanted to still have that, that tradition and that joy. And I mean, really, we had people when shutdown started already off. Um, so it's a, uh, it was fun to be able to bring that joy to people, but it's, um, I think we knew it was going to be different. So we, you know, slow played it throughout the year with there being so much uncertainty just with everything. Um, and I think when everybody, when everything started happening in March, we thought, oh, you know, for sure we'll have a lighting ceremony by, by November. Um, but here we are. So, you know, it was, it was important for us to, to continue the tradition and to really celebrate it in a different way. So it became a broadcast only event. Um, and our focus was really on, um, on Kansas city and on the essential workers of Kansas city. So, um, you know, we had fun shout outs throughout from you know, local celebrities or national celebrities that have their Kansas City ties, past flippers like, you know, Jason Sudeikis, Alex Gordon. Um, we still had the great performances from um, local mu musicians. The symphony was a part of it. The ballet was a part of it. Um, Cassie Joy. So it still had those traditional components, um, but it was all on the broadcast. And I think it was really nice for people to be able to tune into that. And then, of course, the countdown um, was a tribute to, to Kansas 
the city's essential workers and you know all that they've done to to get us to this point and continue to put the community first i think that's fantastic you know the the plaza has been here and you know we like to think of it as as a tourist attraction but the fact that it's such a staple of support within Kansas City and the great thing that great things that you guys are doing and have continued to do. Um, I love getting getting to hear about that. So I'm, I'm so grateful that that you've had the time to be able to share all of that with us today. Um, as we know, COVID has been weird. You know, we've you've mentioned it. We all know it. We've had to pivot. We've had to shift. Um, what is what does the future look like um, as far as, you know, the plaza and events that you guys have and then even getting into the excitement of new stores that you guys are going to have opening up soon. Yeah, well, it definitely put a hold on everything, um, you know, for retailers and restaurants looking to maybe do new openings this year. And we had some exciting things on the docket, but I think all of that, you know, again, is on hold for a little bit, but we'll hopefully I'll come back. But that's not to say that, you know, a lot of good things still haven't happened. And we've had a lot of new store openings um, this year and the latter part of the year. Um, Sterling Bank, which might be the most beautiful bank you've ever seen, um, opened um, on the plaza in August. And it's, again, just a beautiful, beautiful build out. Um, we have Nickel and Suede, which is, of course, uh, the local accessories uh, company run by Kylie Nichols, and she's just so inspirational, and we just are so happy to have her on the plaza, so that was a great addition. Um, Rally House actually expanded, so let's, you know, thanks thank the Chiefs and all of the other Kansas City sports for doing amazing because, you know, in their in their space that they had on Ward Parkway, they just had so much demand for Chiefs gear and everything else. So they've expanded um, into a second location, which is great. They have more room for, for all of the demand for people wanting to get some great gear. Um, Matches Boutique is another great opening that we had, um, you know, in the last couple of months. And she is just an amazing entrepreneur. And she you know, worked at Coldstone Creamery. Um, she had this online boutique. Uh, she's got these ties to, to the plaza. And when she said, you know, I want to open my first brick and mortar location, you know, I think that what COVID has created is a climate in which, you know, a lot of stores that might not be ready to jump into brick and mortar said, hey, now is a great actual, I mean, there's, there's an environment and an opportunity here um, where I can have an amazing space and really work with um, somebody that wants to, to bring in great new stores. So she's an amazing business owner. Um, so we love Matches Boutique. Um, and then there's been some other, you know, Kindred, which is the same uh, group that does Made in KC, they opened a boutique and um, State Soccer, which is another really cool um, new brand and, you know, run by some great uh, Kansas City guys that have connections to Sporting KC and, and just, you know, the great community feel. They did a holiday pop-up as well. So, you know, I think that there are just some really fun things happening, um, some great local opportunities and, you know, an environment in which there, there are opportunities. Um, but I think, you know, on the horizon, there's still going to be a lot of great things that happen in the future once things get back to normal and you see brands that really want to look back at, at growth opportunities and where they want their stores. And I think what COVID has really done to the retail landscape is said, you know, especially with shopping centers, there are great shopping centers and then there's maybe not so great shopping centers. And, you know, I think what this has done is really um, expedited the process of of there was going to be this time when um, you saw the success of some centers and the demise of others, uh, really. And, you know, I think that this has probably expedited that. And Tobman, who um, is the owner of, of um, the plaza, you know, owns really amazing properties throughout the country. Um, and I think that you'll see ownership groups like that um, and properties like this that continue to, to stand up. I think that's great. And, you know, that speaks a lot to the resilience of Kansas City and, you know, our ability of a, as a community to get behind and support our local businesses and, and to be able to hear the encouraging news that, that you guys have businesses that are opening and that are doing well and that you're seeing people come out and, and support them. I think that's incredible and, and obviously so great to hear from the Chamber's perspective. Um, so all of that, you know, that, that you've talked about the exciting things that are coming, um, how, you know, we're getting ready to finally wrap this crap year that's happened. So what are you most ex excited about and looking forward to in 2021? I think, like you said, everybody's ready to, you know, kind of see what comes out on the other side of this. And I think we're all excited for, um, you know, some growth in leasing. We're excited 
to bring back these really traditional events um, with art fair and the lighting ceremony and, and you know some format where we all get to be together again and I think you know this year this is a, a small little one but the plaza bunnies are such an amazing tradition in Kansas City and that uh, that season happened during the stay at home order so we're really excited to bring the plaza bunnies back out again this year um, so I mean I think just kind of the the return to some of those traditions um, and certainly as we look forward even past 2021 we're coming up on our 100th anniversary of the plaza here um, in a couple of years and that's a really exciting thing for for us and for Kansas City um, Nordstrom is moving forward and will be opening their store in 2023 so you know there's there is a lot of positivity on the horizon uh, that we're looking forward to. Love it. Thanks for sharing. And I think we've got time for one one last question. And, and this is how we're going to end all of our um, all of our shows. So um, if you can tell us one thing um, that you want people to know about the Country Club Plaza, what would that be? Well, I think that you kind of mentioned it, Katie, when you mentioned, you know, the the local stores and what Kansas City's really done to be resilient. And I think that there's misconceptions out there about, you know, the the brands that you see at the plaza. And certainly we have the brands that people want to shop at. Um, but a lot of those are local. So we do have when you look at our lineup of retailers and restaurants, um, we really are about 40 percent local. Um, and I think that, you know, that whether it's the media or just misconceptions. I mean, I think that, um, you know, we hear a lot about not having local brands represented at the plaza and that's just not, it's not true. Um, we've got amazing local brands again from, from like Made in KC to Rye, um, Tarasi is a longstanding local, Salon Sophia. I mean, you've got these people that have been here for decades that are um, amazing, amazing, you know, retailers, tenants to, to the plaza, but really to Kansas City. And so, you know, we, we love our local restaurants, we love our local retailers, but, you know, we love our other brands too, because as I mentioned, I mean, those are the people that make up those stores are, are Kansas Cityans and we want to support them. Um, and we know that people are shopping there. That's I will say one more thing too, because yeah. I, I thought of my, my fourth pillar, so we can go back to that. Um, it's community and economic development. And I should give a shout out because I mean, there's amazing groups that we support within that, like um, Prospect Business Association and Truce Market Collective. And I just, I had to go back to that because we love those groups too. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. Um, I'm, I'm, thank you so much for all that you've shared um, with us today and taking the time um, out of your day. We are we are grateful and love hearing about all that you guys are doing. Continue to do the good work that you're doing. Um, about the time that this airs and people see it, it'll be when the Chiefs are working their way towards the Super Bowl. So um, I'd love to encourage everyone, get out to the plaza, support local, support the plaza, support our Chiefs. Um, and thank you, Casey, for being in the Zoom with us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. And I, I love getting to talk about the plaza and certainly to people who are passionate about it like you. Wonderful. Thanks, Casey. All right, thank you.